example, I want to do an example of two-dimensional kinematics. And that example is uh, written here. So a stone is thrown horizontally with speed v on an incline making an angle phi with the ground. How far down the incline does it go? So let me get a picture of this incline here, and I'm going to try to get a pretty decent sized picture. This incline makes an angle phi relative to the ground, so that's uh, phi. I might have a picture of persons throwing a stone or something like that, but I'm going to make this sort of a schematic. I'm going to assume the, the particle model, and I'm going to say my stone leaves directly from this point. It's thrown horizontally, so it starts this way, and it's going to fall, and then eventually reach some final point. And what I'm asked for is, is how far down the incline does it go? I'm going to look at that length. That's this length here. How far down the incline does that go? I'm going to, doesn't say what to call it. I'm going to call that L. One of the things I might notice right away, this is my, my point here. This angle is also phi. So here's my schematic. Now I need a coordinate system. I'm going to start my coordinate system where the uh, object starts, and I'm going to have this direction as my positive x. And to change things up a bit, I'm going to say this direction is my positive y. It's going to travel some distance x and some distance y before it falls. And I know that x, where it lands, is going to be equal to L cosine phi. I also know that the y direction, and since it's positive, it's positive y, that it is going to be L sine phi. So I can see already from my picture, I've got some relationships between the what I'm trying to find, which is the down the incline, versus the x and y distance that it travels. I also can sort of identify two points in time that I'm interested in, a ti and a t final. t initial, of course, is when it launches, and t final when it lands. I'm going to call my t initial 0 and my t final item t. My x-axis, x at initial, it starts as equal to 0. x final, I don't know what that is, I call that x. My initial, x velocity, and that's given by v, it starts out with some, it's thrown at some speed v. The final, x velocity, we don't know. We know the acceleration in the x direction, and that's uh, 0, and then the time is, is the same for both x and the y. The initial y, we know is 0. The uh, final y we don't know, call that y. The initial velocity in the y axis, we know that's zero. It was launched horizontally. And the, the final velocity in the y we don't know. But we know the acceleration in the y. It has a magnitude g. And we'll check our coordinate system. In this case, y is pointing down. The acceleration is pointing down towards the center of the Earth. So given this coordinate system, the acceleration in the y dimension is g. These are sort of parameters we know. We're sort of in the brainstorming stage. We do have some handy kinematic equations that relate these parameters between two instances in time. So let's take a look at some of that. Let's first look at the uh, x direction. And this is pretty handy because the acceleration is zero, initial position is zero. x, our final position, is equal to our initial velocity times t. So that's a, a handy equation. I might even give that a number. Call that mm, equation number one. If we look in the y direction, we have, of course, the similar uh, relationship. And so here, this is 0 and this is 0. And so we have y is equal to 1 half g t squared. And it's positive because the a y is positive. We also know from the physical geometry of the system, this triangle, just like we extracted that information, we know that tangent of phi is equal to y divided by x. Phi is something we know. Phi is something given. So it's good to establish relationships between our known quantities and our unknown quantities. I think we have our equations here, and we can start to solve. We don't know t, so we can get rid of it. We can solve for t here. 
in equation one. T is equal to x over v. So by putting that into equation two, we get y is equal to g over two x squared over v squared. And so we're given v squared, so we know that, but we still don't know um, x and y. But given y, we can eliminate that by putting that into equation three. And we get tangent of phi is equal to, well, one over x times y, which is g over two x squared over v squared. Uh, we have a factor of x that cancels. We can solve for x using this expression. And so x is equal to two v squared over g tangent of phi. And so now that we know x, we can substitute into there into our first expression, so this is equal to the length down, which is what we initially needed to know, times cosine of phi. And now we can solve for our final answer. Our length is equal to two v squared over g tangent phi over cosine phi. So does, does this make sense? We have v squared over g, and so we can check units, meters squared over seconds squared, and that's acceleration, which is meters second squared. So meters, our units are correct. And as phi goes to zero, this goes to one, this goes to zero, the whole thing goes to zero because now the entire thing sits on the ground. As v gets larger, the length that it goes is much larger, Looks like some of the limiting cases work as well as our units. As these things scale, that makes sense as well. So this now is the length that the stone makes going down the incline.